Deirdre McLaughlin, and I've had the privilege of being one of Terry's coaches, her own coaches, one of her physical therapists, and more importantly, one of her friends. And uh, when Tracy asked me to speak today, I've been thinking about what stories I might like to share. And as I was going through scenarios and times I've spent with Terry in all of those realms that I've mentioned, one theme continued through, which you all know already, and that is her strength and also her incredible ability to tolerate discomfort. As a coach, I was a witness to her strengths and her fortitude with racing, and not just the great races, because we all know how mentally and physically tough you are isn't determined by the easy winds and the beautiful water and the great practices, but by the challenging practices, the crummy conditions, the wind and the waves um, that she brought us today, <laughs> which she did. She brought those to us today. And the less than perfect race day conditions. Somehow I got to know Terry while she was roaming in Colorado. Um, I think from one of my fellow BU alums, I can't, I was just talking to some of her teammates. Um, and I realized she made an impression on me even then, before I was even her coach. As one of her physical therapists, I worked with her through a couple of tough shoulder injuries. And I don't think she'd mind me saying so, but Terry put down some really good scar tissue. <laughs> and one day, uh, we were working through a session, and all my sessions are about an hour, so they're pretty long. And uh, typically, the patients and I have some pretty good communication. I look for some grimacing, you know, some sighing, and I give them a break when they need a break or we move to something different. Um, so we're going along and she had this super stiff shoulder and she's doing great saying yeah I'm fine fine continue continue so we continue and uh, when our session's over and she sits up and she basically goes into shock <laughs> never had that happen in 20 years she's shivering and she's cold and I'm like Terry oh my gosh we have to go put her in a dark room and put a blanket on her and a heating pad I said why didn't you why didn't you say anything I said it's okay I really wanted to get better and I could handle it I could handle it and everything she's gone through in the past 18 months or two years all the procedures and surgeries and drugs and even the last few days I was lucky enough to spend with her I'm struck by her determination to be to be present. It was the same determination she showed in my office, the same determination she showed on the water, and the same determination when she continued to work and be social when so many of us might not be tough enough to do so. And I've also been thinking about this idea that one can lose a battle um, with cancer. And I just don't think it's true. You know, we're all gonna lose our battle. We're all gonna follow. And I don't think that's the battle, the injury, the illness. I think it's the battle of how we live and not allowing anything to get in the way of being ourselves. Because it didn't stop Terry. She continued to be and to be present and to live her life and to go to dinners and plays and beaches and races and she just continued to do that without complaining really too which is amazing in itself. and that's when I realized she was able to tolerate immense amount of discomfort and still be Terry and I think that's what I saw in her as her coach that she was able to tolerate discomfort and that's one of the things that makes a rower into a racer. And Terry was a racer. And from some of those photos inside, she's racing you on the track. So I will have all of those memories and also um, a particular bittersweet moment um, at Tracy and Mary's house those last few days. And she sang along with Christina, brought her guitar. 
And she put her fist in the air to tell us she was going to be there tomorrow. And she was. So she won her battle in my book. And I'm very lucky to have known her. So thanks. <laughs>